نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل العقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طویبا و عملا متکبلا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ We will be starting with verse 48 of Surah An-Nisa. Allah says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraqa bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika li man yashau wa man yushrik billahi faqad iftara ithman azweema. Indeed, there is absolutely no doubt that Allah does not forgive what association with him, but he forgives what is less than that for whom he wills. And he who associates others with Allah has certainly fabricated a tremendous sin. In verse 48 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah is talking about and mentioning a major sin which he will not forgive. That is an unpardonable sin is being mentioned. And then moreover Allah has also talked about it as it being a, a huge fabrication with Allah. And then Allah has also labeled it as ithman azweema a tremendous, a major sin. So three things now I repeat. A sin which will not be forgiven, an unpardonable sin, something which is fabricating over Allah, and then a tremendous or a major sin. What is this? Is to associate or find partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Polytheism is what Allah is talking about in this verse. We all know that on the day of the judgment, for a person's salvation, two basic things would be needed. Number one, right faith or belief. And the second, be righteous conduct or righteous deeds. So now the right faith or the belief, we know it comprises of five parts or five sections of faith or five pillars of faith. And by some scholars, they are also considered as six. These five are Iman Billah, meaning faith or belief in Allah. Then the second being belief in the day of judgment that is iman bil akhirah iman in the day of judgment or the day of resurrection then iman bil malaika faith or belief on the angels and their beings iman bil qutub belief or faith on the holy scriptures or the holy books which were revealed to the messengers of allah iman bil rusul that is belief or faith in the prophets or the messengers of Allah. And the sixth by some scholars is considered as faith or belief in destiny or fate. That is it being good or bad. So these are the five things for which a Muslim has to have faith or believe in when he enters Islam or when he embraces Islam. Prophet said that faith has more than 70 branches. The best among these is to declare 
that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. And we have to be very clear about the fact that any distortion in this faith, in this faith or belief of Allah will not avail even if one's good deeds extend to the vastness of the heavens and the earth. As Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, verse 91, Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَمَّاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ فَلَنْ يُقْبَلُوا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمْ مِلُّ الْأَرْزِ زَحَبًا لَوِفْتَدَى بِهِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ أَثَابٌ أَلِيمٌ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ as to those who reject faith and they die rejecting, never would be accepted from any such as much gold as the earth contains, though they should offer it for ransom. For such is a grievous punishment and they will find no helpers. So what is this? Allah is mentioning the punishment for those who reject faith or reject belief. And the first and the most important belief is belief in Allah. And as far as the belief in Allah is concerned, the primary and the foremost belief in Allah is the belief in oneness of Allah, monotheism or tawhid. This is the first pillar of Islam. This is the basic foundation of Islam. Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Buni al-Islam ala khamsin shahadatan an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulullah wa iqami salata wa itai zakata wa alhajji wa sawmi ramadhan the foundation or the pillars of islam are on five things number one witnessing declaring announcing shahada that there is no god but allah and that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the servant is the slave and the messenger of Allah, offering salah and paying zakat and performing hajj and fasting in the month of Ramadan. So these are the four pillars of Islam and the first and the basic and the foremost pillar of Islam is to witness the oneness of Allah. So this monotheism, this tawheed, this belief in oneness of Allah is what without which Islam, faith or belief will not be perfected or completed. As Allah says, this will lead to all, all good deeds being wasted. Surah Al-An'am, verse number 88, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا لَحَبِتَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ If they are to join partners with Allah, all that they did, that is all the good deeds they did would be in vain for them. Everything will go down the drain. Everything will be wasted and there will be no rewards of the good deeds, however great they may be, if the person has done what? Law ashraku. Joining partners with Allah and committing polytheism will waste all the good deeds. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that is why Allah orders. Allah orders so frequently in Quran. Worship Allah and find no partners with Allah. Surah Zumar, verse number 65, Allah orders. Do not call any other partners with Allah or you will be amongst those who will be punished. You will be among those who will be punished. This is Surah Shura, verse number 213. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares in Surah Maida, verse number 72, 
إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةَ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ There is absolutely no doubt. مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Whoever finds partners with Allah, whoever commits polytheism, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةَ there it is sure shot it is definite that allah will forbid with him the gardens of paradise wa ma'wa hunnar and fire will be his abode and this is exactly what we are reading today the verse number 48 let's repeat it again inna allah la yaghfiru allah will not forgive ay yushrik bihi that anybody finds partners with him wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha Verse number 116 in Surah Nisa Allah repeats the same thing that Allah will not forgive joining or finding partners with him but he will forgive whom he pleases other sins than this. So that is why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam condemned polytheism and ordered to stay steadfast on monotheism. The words of the hadith are la tushrik billahi shay'a don't join partners with allah la tushrik billahi shay'a wa in qutilta aw harqta do not find partners with allah even though you may be slain or you may be put in fire so this is the importance of understanding the concept of monotheism and negating all forms of polytheism a person who believes and has faith committed faith on the oneness of allah will be released from hell fire and he will be made to enter the paradise and will also receive the benefits of the intercession of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there's so many ahadith to explain all this concept hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala and who narrates in musnad ahmad that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever dies mamata whoever dies in a condition that he testifies with heart felt conviction that there is no god but allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of allah he will enter paradise so this is a promise of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam similarly hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was riding and hazrat muaz bin jabal was riding behind him and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam called him o muaz and he replied la baik rasulullah wa sa'daika prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i am obedient and i'm i'm here prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again called him o muaz and he repeated with the same words when he was again called o muaz and he again repeated with the same words and then getting his attention prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the person who affirms that there is no god but allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the servant and the messenger of allah allah will forbid hell for him and another another hadith narrated by hazrat usman radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in muslim prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says Whoever dies in a condition that he considers certain that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah will enter paradise. So this is the promise for monotheism. Hazrat Anas radhiyallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Tirmizi how Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has promised the bondsmen of Allah forgiveness of all sins if they stick to the faith of oneness of Allah. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Allah almighty declares, O son of Adam, while you keep on calling me and you have hope in my forgiveness, I shall forgive every sin you have committed. O son of Adam, if you come to me with your sins that are about the size of the earth and meet me in a state that you have never made anyone as my partner i shall forgive all these sins that are even about the size of the earth allahumma ja'alni min at-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutawakkirin rabbana 
اننا آمنا فغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار حسد ابو مريرا رضي الله تعالى عنه reports in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said on the day of judgment the people who affirm the people who affirm with heartfelt conviction that there was no one worthy of worship but allah will receive the benefits of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's intercession so this is the importance of the faith in the oneness of allah now talking about this monotheism tawhid the faith or belief in oneness of allah i would want to make it clear that it has three aspects the three aspects aspects being oneness in the being of allah oneness in the worships of allah and third is oneness in the attributes of allah now i'll be talking about all three of these one after the other the first is oneness in the being of allah this is what allah clearly announces in surah al-ikhlas the four verses of surah al-ikhlas allah says qul huwa allahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad say he is allah one and only one Allah the eternal absolute he begets not nor is he begotten and there is none like unto him this is actually the belief in oneness of being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qul huwa Allahu ahad is actually the oneness in being what does it actually mean that there there has to be no partners to Allah The basic concept of this monotheism in being is that the person would believe that Allah has no partners, no wise, no helpers. He doesn't have a spouse, a wife, no offsprings, sons or daughters. So when somebody starts associating the creations of Allah or the creator with him, like worshiping the moon the sun and the stars like the people during the prophethood of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam they had a huge nanar god the god of the moon they had a huge shamas god the god of the sun the sun god and they used to worship the stars then people worshiping idols made of wood or idols made of idols made of stone like the people of Mecca they had they had 360 idols placed in Hana Kaaba so this was what then worshiping trees worshiping fire the fire worshipers like the people in Persia so this is all associating the creations of Allah with his with the creator and then the belief of certain followers of the prophets like the Jews are the christians that their prophets were the sons of allah or they were a part of allah as allah mentions in surah tauba verse number 30 wa qalat al yahud wa zayd ibn allah wa qalat al nasar wa qalat al nasar al masih ibn allah zalika qawluhum bi afahihim the jews say that uzair is a son of allah and the christians say that christ is the son of allah this is a saying which just they are saying and they they imitate what the unbelievers of the old period used to do and allah curse allah's curse be on them how they are deluded away from the truth so the concept of the christian community in saying isa ibn allah that has it isa alayhi salam na'uzu billah summa na'uzu billah min zalik was the son of Allah or the concept of trinity concept of three gods and the Jews saying Uzair ibn Allah that Hazrat Uzair radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was the son of God or like the Makkans they used to believe that the angels are the daughters of Allah as Allah says 
in the verse 100 of Surah Al-Anam, Allah says, وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَقَاءَ الْجِنِّ وَخَلَكَهُمْ وَخَرَكُوا لَهُ بَنِينَ وَبَنَاتٍ بِغَيْرِ إِلْمٍ سُحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ عَمَّا يَتِفُونَ They make the jinns equal with Allah. And though Allah has created the jinns, and they falsely have no knowledge, attribute to him sons and daughters, praise and glory be to him, for he is above what they attribute to him. Then making humans or making the creations of Allah as a part of Allah. Allah says in Surah Az-Zuhr of verse number 15, وَجَعَلُوا لَهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ جُزْءٌ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَقَفُورٌ مُّبِينٌ They attribute to some of his servants as a share with him. Truly is man clearly unthankful. So I repeat now, if I sum up what is the faith in oneness of Allah is to think Never, never, ever to associate the creations with Allah. Creations being associated with Allah will be polytheism. And then thinking that the angels are the daughters of Allah will be polytheism. And then thinking that the prophets are the sons of Allah or a part of Allah will be polytheism in, the, in being with Allah. <coughs> the second... The second aspect of oneness of Allah is oneness in worships of Allah. How can we understand this? That when a person embraces Islam and says, La ilaha illallah, then this is actually a pledge of the bondsman. This is actually the covenant to stick on the faith of oneness of Allah. Then when we, when we say, while narrating Surah Al-Fatiha in our Salah or otherwise, when we say, This is also a pledge which announces that we will worship no one other than Allah. Allah makes us announce and highlight this concept as Allah says in Surah Al-Am, verse number 162 Qul say, announce, tell that all my salah, my sacrifice, my life and death is for the sustainer of the worlds. He has no partners. I am commanded to be the first to submit to his orders. So this is the worship, oneness in worship of Allah. And this is exactly what we have been taught to say when we say in we sit in the tashahud of our salah and we say, At-tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tawayibat. All my all my verbal, my physical, or my monetary, all my oral, my bodily, or my fiscal worships are for Allah. So now, the concept of iya kana budu is basically in two forms. It actually relates to two forms and states of mind. Number one, that by saying this and by believing and having faith, in the oneness of Allah as worship, we mean what? That we will worship Allah and only Allah, number one. Number two, we will worship only for Allah. We will worship, number one, we will worship only Allah and only Allah. And number two, we will worship only for Allah. Worships can be physical worships like salah, offering salah, fasting, remembrance or zikr, recitation of Quran, migration or hijrat, jihad, and then performing hajj has a component of physical worship as well. And then worships are monetary worships, like paying the zakat and paying charity in the way of Allah, and then 
than spending for jihad and again i repeat hajj has a monetary as well as a physical component of worship and then spiritual worships like the fear of allah piety taqwa then remembrance remembrance of allah or zikr gratitude to allah that is shukr and then dependence on allah reliance and dependence or trust on allah that is tawakkul these are all spiritual worships now all these forms of worships will only be for allah and of allah that is exactly what allah orders in surah fussilat verse number 37 where allah says la tasjudu lis shamsi wal al qamar wasjudu lillahi allazi khalaqa hunna in kuntum miyahu ta'budun do not prostrate to the sun or to the moon but prostrate to allah who has created them and if it is him you wish to serve so worshiping for allah the salah will be for allah as allah says in surah hajj verse number 77 ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu arqu wa asjudu wa abudu rabbakum wa fa'lu khayran la'allakum tuflahun la'allakum tuflahun o believers you bow down you prostrate and you worship your sustainer and you do good deeds so that you may be their successors so all the salah all the fasting all the performing of hajj and spending of zakat and spending of all forms of charity will be in the path of allah and for allah dedication ablation bowing offering sacrifices should be all for allah supplication lahu da'watul haqq supplication seeking protection a'udhu billah repentance rabbi ghfir warham wa anta khairur rahimin trust reliance hasbi allah la ilaha illa hu hasbun allah ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal wakil this is all the oneness of the worships of allah and then in the oneness of worship after all these forms of worship the obedience of allah obedience will only be of allah submission surrendering will be for allah what does that mean what does that exactly means is that we realize and we announce that if the desires of our soul the desires of our soul the orders of the wishes of our family our spouse our children the traditions or the customs of our society and of our community or the laws the regulations of our country they they are they abide by the orders of quran and hadith they abide by the orders of or the commandments of quran and sunna then we will abide by them we will obey them we will accept them but if in any form all of the explained above which i have explained they clash they negate they oppose or they are contrary to the orders of or the commandments of quran or sunna or hadith then we will not abide obey or accept them this is the worship or the obedience of allah only as allah says in surah furqan verse number 43 araita allazi have you ever seen a person manitta khaza ilahahu hawahu have you ever seen a person who has taken as his own desires he has taken his own desires as his god as his allah what does that mean that means that we are supposed to obey allah but when what our heart starts desiring for we start obeying that 
and leave the commandments and the orders of Allah. This is making our souls, this is making our, our own self as what? Our desires as an ilah. And then the second thing of oneness of worship is that the worships, all the worships would only be for Allah. They will be only for Allah. The purpose of any of the physical or the monetary or the spiritual worships would not, would not be in any form other to please Allah, to save ourselves from his punishment, to save ourselves from his hellfire, to save her, ourselves from his wrath. The purpose of all our bodily or our verbal worships will we neither be to please or to impress people around us, nor would it be to gain the worldly repetitions, the fame, the popularity, or the worldly successes or gains. The purpose would be just to seek Allah's pleasure. No worldly gains or interests whatsoever. Prophet ﷺ was heard asking and telling the companions that shouldn't I inform you of an evil deed which is even more immense and gross and intense than the faction of the Dajjal or the Antichrist? They said, please do so. The Prophet ﷺ said, concealed polytheism. And then he was asked that what does it mean? Prophet ﷺ said that if a person stands up and starts praying and he notices that somebody is looking at him and then in this condition he just prolongs his salah like prolonging the the raku the prolonging the prostration of the sajda or the qiyam just because he wants to impress the person this is concealed polytheism this salah will not be for a light will be for impressing the person the third form of the faith is the third aspect of the faith in oneness of Allah is the oneness in the attributes of Allah. The attributes of Allah are so countless and there are so many that it is just not possible to enumerate them or even to imagine them as Allah declares in Surah Al-Kahf Verse number 109. Qul, Qul law qana al-bahru madadan li kalimati rabbi la nafid al-bahru qabla an tanfad kalimatu rabbi wa law jitna bi mislihi madada. Say that if the oceans were ink to write the words of my Lord, sooner would the oceans be exhausted than the words of my Allah. Even, even if similar another ocean was added for the purpose. So this is how we can understand that the countless attributes of Allah are countless and innumerable. So anybody associating the attributes of Allah to someone else is then committing polytheism in the attributes of Allah and it will be a major revealed polytheism like one of the attributes of Allah is that he is Rabbul Alameen the sustainer of the worlds he is the provider Razik Razak he knows the future Alimul Ghaib Allahul Ghayub he is the creator Khalik Khalak Ahsan al He is the helper. So now you see if any person rather than praying to Allah and rather than if the person is needing any forms of sustenance or any form of provisions then rather than asking for the razak 
Allah is Razik, Allah is Razak, and He has the keys for the provision. Allah says, Yarzuku man yashau bi ghayri hisab. But knowing everything like this, a person still supplicates or calls to anybody other than Allah, may it be a saint, may it be a prophet, then this will be polytheism. Like here in the subcontinent, for people in the subcontinent, they they start asking Sayyid Ali Hijwari, Rahmatullah Alay, as Ya Data, O Provider, Ya Ganjabash, O Provider of the Triers. So this is polytheism. Allah knows the future. He is Alimul Ghaib, Allah Mul Ghayub. But if any person, I'll be talking about the whole uh, concept of future predictions in the lecture after the whole topic of polytheism, inshallah. If somebody goes to a paramist or to an astrologist to find about the future, this again will be what? This will be polytheism. And this will be major revealed polytheism. Allah is the helper. But like in subcontinent, people start causing some saint as Ghosi Azam, Ghosi Thakalain, the greatest helper. This is negation of the concept of monotheism in the attributes of Allah. And this is an unpardonable sin. This is an unpardonable sin. So we nearly have talked about the main concepts. Now, I would want all of us to understand the different types of polytheism. Polytheism can be major or minor. It can be concealed or it can be revealed. Then it can be in the being, in the worships or in the attributes of Allah. Polytheism and monotheism are two conditions which are totally opposite. They're antagonistic and they can both never coexist. If a person is indulging in polytheism, then he is obviously and very obviously negating the concepts of monotheism or the belief and faith in oneness of Allah. And a person who has a strong heartfelt conviction of faith and belief in the oneness of Allah will obviously be negating and refraining from polytheism. Allah, help us all protect and elevate our faith and belief. Allah, Allah, protect, protect the faith the belief of our families, of our descendants. Allah, we all pray to you. May death be attended to all of us when we are in a state of faith. We, we are in a state of perfection of belief. We are in a state of obedience. May death be attended to us when we are in a condition of remembrance, of gratitude. When we are, we are performing salah, when we are in a position of prostration, Allah may be, may we be the lucky ones to be uttering la ilaha illallah at the time of death. Allah may we be the lucky ones to, to spend our lives till death, to strive, to struggle till our last breath, to spend our lives according to the concept of La ilaha illallah. Allah save us all from polytheism and help us all be steadfast on all forms and aspects of monotheism. رَبَّنَا تَقَبُّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّا كَانْتَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ وَاتُّبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّا كَانْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Verse number 49 أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَّا الَّذِينَ يُزَّكُّونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ 
വലില്ലാഹു യുസക്കി മയ്യഷാഉ വലാ യുസ്ലമൂന ഫതീല ഹവ് യു നോട്ട് സീൻ ദോസ് ഹു ക്ലെയിം ദംസെൽവ്സ് ടു ബി പ്യുർ റാദർ അല്ലാഹ് പ്യൂരിഫൈസ് ഹൂം ഹി വിൽസ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻജസ്റ്റിസ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ഡൺ ടു ദം ഈവൻ ആസ് മച്ച് ആസ് ദ ത്രെഡ് ഇൻസൈഡ് എ ഡേഡ് സീഡ് വേഴ്സ് നമ്പർ 50 انظر كيف يفطرون على الله الكذب وكفى به اثما مبينا look how they invent about Allah and truth and sufficient is that as a manifest sin verse number 51 alam tara ila allazina utu nasiban min alkitab Have you not seen those who were given a portion of the scripture who believe in superstitions or chip and false objects of worship and say about the disbelievers these are better guided than the believers as to the way or the path of life Allah is asking a question that have you ever come across the people who were the followers of the previous prophets udu nasibum min alkitabi who were given the holy books or the holy scriptures before you and they were doing what they were believing in chipt now in verse number 51 allah is talking about chipt and in the next verse verse 52 allah is saying that people who believe on chipt what will be they punished with ulaika allazina na'anahum allah these these are the ones whom allah has cursed wa may yal'anillahu falan tajida lahu nasira and whom he whom allah curses never will you find for him a helper so now in these two verses allah azza wa jal is mentioning about an action an activity which allah is strongly condemned and this is jibt so allah has condemned jibt and allah has said that people who are indulging who are involving or who are committing jibt they are cursed by allah and as i already mentioned in one of the previous sessions that any sin for which curse is mentioned in quran or in hadith is a major sin so allah has allah has mentioned that they are cursed by allah and that they will not find anybody as a helper in the hellfire to save them so jib is an activity or it is a sin for which is the curse of allah hence it is a major sin and being a major sin hell has been promised and in hell help by none of the interceders or none nobody's intercession will avail of them so we really want to look into it that what is meant by jibt jibt as explained by scholars has basically two meanings number one superstitious beliefs superstitions are superstitious beliefs all forms of superstitious beliefs like the belief that something would be ominous the concept of an evil eye or the bad omen something bringing bad fortune or something being ill-starred being unlucky or being ill-fated this is the superstitious belief like people associate the concept of bad omen with certain animals or birds like owls bats black cats and there is a very common notion here in the people of subcontinent that when a black cat crosses or passes in front of a person who is walking then it will it will bring bad luck for the person then people consider the black color itself as a bad omen on wedding ceremonies on marriages 
on happy occasions they on even on eat festivals certain families they they avoid and they refrain from wearing black colors then wednesday the days among the days of seven days of the week wednesday is considered to be a day of bad omen then the the dates of the lunar months even the macans used to consider that and even here this myth sis persists myth of superstitious belief still persists there are people who think that the dates when from the 1st of the 15th to the 15th of the month where the size of the moon is slowly increasing these are the days of good fate or good fortune and the days from the 15th to the 29th or the 30th of the lunar month when the size of the moon is slowly weaning off and decreasing these are the days of bad omen and then the in the lunar calendar the month of safar has been considered was considered by people in mecca and medina and still even here people consider that it is an ominous month and so on these days or on these dates or on these months people do not travel they the superstitious people they do not travel they do not make business deals they do not make contracts they do not accept proposals they do not arrange marriage parties because they think it's all ominous and and then you all know throughout the world the date the number 5 and number 13 is considered to be unlucky and thinking that the number of 13 is unlucky in hotels they just do not make room number 13 it is 11 12 and then 14 15 they just skip the number 13 and then where they are making the floors of those multi story buildings they do not make the floor number 13 floor number 12 and then the floor number 14 how silly and how pointless if they're just not going to write the number 13 in front of the room or in front of the floor what difference would it make it would still be the floor number 13 or roof number 13 but this is a superstitious concept that they do not write the number 13 and then you know proceeding in this superstitious concept certain persons become omnis women women who have aborted a woman whose pregnancy gets aborted or a woman who gets a still birth gives birth to a still baby or a, or a woman who has an iud that is an intrauterine death of the baby they just start considering her a bad omen and they would not let her come close to their pregnant women or to the women who have just delivered a baby in their postpartum period then widows widows are considered as ominous and they think that she should stay away even her shadow should stay away from the bride or the groom and then they don't let her participate in the ceremonies of the wedding so this is all what this is all forbidden this is strictly haram according to this verse it is cursed it is a major sin and then according to the previous discussion it is it is a major and a revealed polytheism like what like it would be polytheism that when a person wears a ring or a bead or a bracelet or a chain or an amulet as a safeguard against an evil eye or illness any form of illness then it would be again jipped it would be forbidden it would be polytheism to hang a horseshoe on the front door or to keep a black pot on the top of the roof or hang a black piece of cloth behind a car just to safeguard against an evil eye or an accident or a calamity or a mishap then it would be polytheism to tie to tie an amulet given by a saint or by a scholar or whatever and tie it up on the arm to safeguard the person against any form of accidents or mishaps or any evil eye 
Prophet وسلم, has strongly condemned all this and forbidden all this. Hazrat Uqba bin Amir Juhaini who reports in Musnad Ahmad that Prophet وسلم, had 10 people around him who had just embraced Islam and Prophet وسلم, was taking an oath from them and he had taken oath from nine of them and when the tenth person came Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi withdrew his hand. He, after withdrawing his hand, he said, he gave the reason why he had done this. He said that he is hanging an amulet, which is either a charm or it is a thread or it is a bead around his neck. And then what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did, he stretched out his hand and he cut the hanging and then he took the oath. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that whoever hangs a charm commits polytheism. Similarly, Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Abu Dawud, the Prophet said, incantation, that is all forms of black magic, witchcraft, magical spells, enchantments, incantation, amulet or charm are all acts of polytheism. Hazrat Abu Bashir Ansari radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim, that Prophet ﷺ, he was accompanying the Prophet ﷺ in a journey. And then Prophet ﷺ sent a messenger. Abdullah bin Abu Bakr states that he sent a messenger to command the people about certain things. And what did the person command? He commanded, Prophet ﷺ commanded, they go and see what? See that no camel has any charm or any thread of incantation around its neck. And if so, it should be cut off immediately. And Imam Malik states that he says that I think people used to hang this charm just to safeguard the camel from evil eyes. And then in a hadith reported by Hazrat Fuzala bin Ubaid Ansari, who Prophet said, whoever has stopped work because of, because of fear of ill omen has committed polytheism. Like just I mentioned people stop traveling, they do not make business deal, they do not make a new contract, they do not accept proposals, they do not arrange marriages on those dates. So whoever stopped a work because of the superstition of ill omen has committed polytheism. May Allah help us under all, understand all this and may Allah give us steadfastness and perfection of our faith. The second thing which we mean by jip is all silly, pointless, useless, non-productive activities or conversations. The most of all being future predictions. So all forms of future predictions trying to find out about one's own future or what will happen when, where, how, what will happen in the future is jipped. And now it being jipped is all what? It is forbidden. All forms of future prediction according to this, to this verse number 51 and 52 of Surah, Surah Tun-Nisa, future prediction being jipped, it will be forbidden. It will be forbidden. And it is the cursed sin. So it is what? It is a major sin. And it is polytheism. And it is it is forbidden according to the verse number 3 of Surah Al-Maidah. An attribute of Allah is what? He is Al-Aleem, All-Knowing. And He is Alimul Ghaib. Alamul Ghayub. He is the only person who knows to the finest and to the minutest detail about the future. As Quran says, Miftahul Ghaib, there are four, there are four keys to the Ghaib. And Allah says, La Yalamuhu illallah. Nobody knows these keys to the future, knowledge of the future other than Allah. And what are these four keys about? The Quran says all issues and matters about the rain, things related to the sustenance, and what happens in the wombs of the mother, in fact, wombs of all the females, 
and what will happen or the issues and the matters of tomorrow and the matters of death. So these are the four things which nobody knows other than Allah. So trying to be curious, trying to find about the future in any form of future prediction will be forbidden, will be cursed, will be a polytheism and it will be a major and a revealed polytheism. Any method, may it be by zodiacs, by horoscopes, by star signs, by palmistry, by astrology, presage, augury, movements of the stars, whatever way you go about reading a magazine or in the newspaper or you go to a person who is telling about the future, this is all polytheism and it is all gypped and forbidden and a major sin. And look how very common it is. But these are the words of the Prophet Wasallam. we need to relate and educate people about. As Safiya radiallahu ta'ala anha reports in Muslim that Prophet Wasallam said, anyone who approaches a fortune teller, anyone who approaches a fortune teller, a fortune teller is whom? Who is going to predict, who is going to tell us, who is going to inform us about the future. To find out about his own future, then his worships of 40 days will not be acceptable to Allah. Astaghfirullah Rabbi. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. Similarly, in another hadith, Prophet said that anyone who, who goes to a fortune teller or a magician and accepts or acknowledges whatever he said or whatever he told, then he, he committed polytheism. And then other words of hadith are that he failed to believe what Prophet ﷺ was sent with, that he is a non-believer. Rabbana innana amanna. Rabbana innana amanna. Let's all declare our faith and seek forgiveness. Let's all declare our faith and seek forgiveness and supplicate for release from hellfire. Allah has taught us these beautiful, beautiful verses in the Quran. Rabbana firlana, Rabbana firlana, Rabbana innana amanna, faghfirlana zanubana waqina dhaban Rabbana innana amanna faghfir lana zanubana wa qaffir anna sayyi'atina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar Fatir wa samawati wal ard anta waliyyi fi dunya wal akhira tawaffani musliman wa alhiqni bisalihin tawaffani musliman wa alhiqni bisalihin Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mata qallati an amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa an a'mala swalikhan tarzwahu wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika swalikhin. Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min munkirat al-akhlaq wal-a'mal wal-akhwari wal-adwa. اللهم توخر قلبي من النفاق وأملي من الرياء ولساني من القذب وعيني من الخيانة إنك تعلم من خائنة العين وما تخفي الصدور. Verse number fifty-two. Verse number fifty-three. Allah says, أم لهم نصيب من الملك؟ Or they have a share? Or they have a share of the mulk of the dominion, then if that were so, they would not give the people even as much as the speck on the date seed. Am yahsuduna nasa? Are they envy people for what Allah has given them out of His bounties? 
but we had already given the family of abraham the scripture and wisdom and conferred upon them a great kingdom rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin